Hi everybody, Nick again sitting in my 20th century information system. I'm going to be talking to you today about information systems again, but this time we're going to be concentrating on searching, what it means to a computer and how we use it in everyday life to find information. Let's review. Information systems focus on data and an information service is focused on collecting data, organizing it and making it available again. When we have a lot of information stored across a variety of databases, searching that becomes harder. Now, because we're human, we've got some really useful built-in searches. So if I was to make one of these red, for example, you could go, aha, there it is. But if I was to make a number of them red and then say, well, how many are there? You'd then have to go and count them. And this is an important difference. We often don't notice what our brain is up to because we're just used to thinking about something and then it happens. In reality, what was happening previously when we were finding that single red one is our brain was going, where's the red bit? And it was looking across our entire visual scope to work out where the red bit was. Now that we've made it explicit, we're having to count the red dots and suddenly this is a conscious effort for us. As far as the computers are concerned, what happens is when they go to, to work out if something is what they're looking for or not, they have to look at everything in turn and compare it to some sort of condition. So a computer would basically be going, okay, this is orange, this is orange, this is orange, aha, this is red, this is what I'm looking for, and it would add one to a counter it was keeping track of how many red things it had. Your approach to counting red things, if you're not a computer, is to basically look and count the dots. But if I give you this picture, you're going to throw your hands up in the air because there are a lot of red dots in here. Whereas the approach the computer uses, where it's inspecting each element in turn to compare it, is actually going to scale. We can apply the same approach here and we should get the right answer. So we talked about information services containing a lot of data. This is where computers come into their own because they can search well as that data gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But it's important to note that it's actually easier to search things when the data is sorted, much as you would have seen with finding things alphabetically. If it's in alphabetical order and you know that something starts with C, you can find it under C. Whereas if it's not in alphabetical order, you've got to search the whole lot and compare each one in turn to see which one is C. Same thing works for computers. It helps if the data is actually sorted into some sort of order to make it easier to search. Much like us, it's really important for the computer to keep track of what it has already searched. Let's look at the flower image again. Now, if we blow that up to be really large, we'll see that it's made up of lots and lots of little points. If the computer is looking for red things, it's got to be systematic and go through them one at a time and not go back and count the things it's already worked on. As we'll see in one of the examples, we can easily simulate this in the classroom uh, very simply for students to let them know that it really helps to keep track of what you've already looked at Otherwise, your search will just keep going around in circles. The digital world is full of data and there's no point putting data into a system unless you can find it again and get it out. Searching of all sorts of forms is one of the fundamental tasks in an information system. When we're searching for information, we have exactly the same problem as when we were looking for dots in the middle of those images. We have to look through a lot of data. A good information service is going to provide a mechanism for fast searching. It's going to allow us to control how we search but also, as part of that, it's going to potentially allow us to do safe searching, which will be of great deal of interest to you and to your students. From earlier, you'll remember that an algorithm is a set of instructions that we basically use to tell a computer what to do in order to solve a problem. Now, there are many different search algorithms because there are different ways to search, depending upon how the information is stored. Did you sort it? Didn't you sort it? What resources you have, sometimes we want to be able to do something that works slowly because we've got a lot of storage available, sometimes we want it to work really, really quickly. Now one of the things is, do we want to sort something first and then search over it, or just do we just want to search over what we have? And effectively, if you remember my sock example from before, it's the amount of work you're prepared to do to organise your sock drawer in order to make it easier to find your socks in the future. But the final thing that's going to have a big influence on which search algorithm you use is going to be which of the search companies you actually decide to use to do your search because they've all got variations on these fundamental search algorithms. Filtering searches allows us to concentrate on the things that we're actually interested in. So rather than searching for ball, you can search for cricket ball or you can search for pictures of a cricket ball. It allows us to concentrate on what we want. Now we can extend this with the notion of safe search where we can say we don't want to see anything that's explicit or questionable. But this actually requires that somebody has gone to the trouble of labeling the content. Because while we can detect you know, rude words and things like that, images are very, very hard to label as offensive or not. 
it's very important to realize that unfortunately no automated filter can actually replace a human being and to make safe searching work you require people to clearly label that material should not be shown to people of a certain age or people who don't want to see that particular type of content which means you actually require people to be nice rather than malign you also need good support from your internet service provider because these settings can be overridden. Most ISPs are pretty good about this so you normally don't have to worry about it. But finally you need a really strong context. What is it that you do and don't want people to see? What you want to show six-year-olds is going to be very different from what you potentially want to show ten-year-olds. So when you're putting this together unfortunately there's going to be a fair bit of work involved in making sure that a combination of you and filters goes together to control the content that your class sees. Computers are really good at searching. If we put data in there and we tell the computer what we want, it'll bring it back out. But the important thing to remember is it'll bring everything back out. So we need to use filters in order to restrict the amount of information we get back. But this depends upon people putting information in in the right way, labeling it the right way. So there are lots of opportunities here for things to surprise you. So if there's nothing else you take away from this, it's before you actually hand somebody a resource, it's always a very good idea to double check it first, and we'll look at an example of that very shortly.